Revertigo. The concept that when you see people from your past, you start acting like you did when you used to be around them. That was 10 years ago. People evolve. I mean, are you the same person in high school? Oh, hell no. I think you're going to enjoy this. Not my girl, Michelle. Bitch, you know it. Oh, she living. She living the only way she know how to. Lord. Oh, girl, you got to get your ring on up in there. I'm hoping my bad ass can hustle me up a vodka Gatorade. For real. <laughs> This comes from another bigger concept. In The Presentation of Self in Everyday Life, which is a book by Irving Goffman, he creates a parallel between social interactions and the way people act in theaters. For him, life is like a play and we are all actors. Every social interaction is organized around what he calls a working consensus. Meaning that we behave differently based on the context and the person we are talking to. For example, you may behave differently when you are at work than you do when you are with your family. Someone may behave differently in the library than in a nightclub. When your environment and the people you are talking to change, you also change. And this is only possible because there are multiple versions of you at least externally. For Goffman, you are one person with different presentations of self. This is a bit similar to what the Japanese used to say. Apparently, we all have three faces. One we show to the world, one we show to our friends and family, and the third face we never show to anyone. I think this has two implications for how we live our lives. The first is that our external identity is always changing. The face you show to the world will change depending on whether you're talking to your mom or your boss. It is hard to know and predict how this will change in the future because the environment we find ourselves in are always changing too. We should not try to cling to our external identity though. This part of us is defined by how people perceive us, status and things that we have little control over. The second implication is that we have an internal identity. This is basically the person you are when you are alone in your bedroom late at night. It is the person you become when no one is watching you. It is the face that you never show to anyone. And this is where personal growth truly happens. When you get to know yourself on a deep level, you make your internal identity stronger. You become more comfortable with your true self. We should aim to get comfortable with our true self instead of identifying with the person that is known by the outside world. Because the person that is known by the outside world is not ultimately you. It is important to know the difference between who you are and who people think you are. Not doing so can lead to great confusion as you may start identifying with your external identity. I'm a dog. You feel me, Shu? Uh huh. For real. He a scrub. Mm, true that. I'm gonna get me my champagne and grape soda on. So how's Columbia? Great. I'm almost done with my dissertation. I'm getting a PhD in behavioral psychology. Oh, I know. Whenever I'm around Lily, she just brings out that side of me. There's a psychological term for the phenomenon. Revertigo? No. Actually, it's associated with the neural pathways that... Oh, no, you did not just pull on my jeans! Please subscribe if you enjoyed these videos. I post a new video every Monday and Friday.